a group of people that we just want to worship you. We want to celebrate in song. We want to rally around your word. And I am so excited, God, about today that as we celebrate the fact that we can have salvation through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That you literally laid out a plan before us and we thank you and we praise you for that. So God, would every word of our mouth, would every meditation of our heart be acceptable unto you? And we ask this with a smile in our heart and on our face. In the name of Christ Jesus, all God's people said.
chains are gone. I was the unfortunate recipient today to watch. I pulled into a Circle K to grab a drink, and there was a young man who evidently had shoplifted, done something, but they were putting handcuffs, handcuffs on him as I walked up. They put the handcuffs on him and they put him in the back of that patrol car. And I couldn't help but think of the song that you chose today, Linda. That that was me and that was you. That's us. Sin has put chains on us. And Christ came with the key. Amen? Amen. He came with the key. And, and, and as Christ interacted with our lives, the chains fell. This morning, we're going to receive, and I'm going to ask that my ushers would come forward. I hope you know who you are. I didn't line those out beforehand. So make it up as you go if you need to. Uh, we're going to receive this morning's offering. Thank you for giving. Thank you for continuing your support of the ministry here at the church. It's a good looking group. Father, our chains are gone. We've been set free. Not as a result of our works, but as a result of your works, God, on the cross. And we thank you and we praise you and we lift up your name in adoration. Thank you for worship today. God, we could literally just stop. And late this afternoon, if we did nothing else, we could say that we have worshipped and we have been in the presence of God Almighty. Thank you for that. Father, there are some that are per, have come prepared to give today. I pray you would take that gift that they give and multiply it tenfold that people might come to know Jesus, that ministry might continue. And the proclamation of salvation, love, grace, and mercy might continue. In Jesus' name, amen.
title. That's last week's title. Don't worry about it. That song that Linda chose is not by accident. Um, I had the privilege this week of having dinner. Well, I, we had a few dinners with some church members this week. It was a good week. And, uh, and for one of the church members, you had to be a little bit sneaky. In fact, you had to, you're, you're sitting at dinner, and then you had to excuse yourself to sneak to the cash register to slide them your credit card and say, hey, they're going to really try to pay for this. I want to pay for it. Could you? And then their comment was, they've already said they're paying for it. And I said, do you have their credit card? And he said, well, no. And I said, you have mine. I said, I don't, you know, first come, first serve, right? Well, then the bill came, and the waiter was so gracious, and Mona and I just wanted to die. He said, he, he looked at the couple we were eating with, and he said, next to your wife, you're going to be delayed, okay? Just staring into those eyes. Welcome! Thank you for being a part of worship this morning. As you can tell, Tracy's not here which throws everything into a tailspin. And Tracy, if you're watching right now, shame on you. <laughs> Tracy is celebrating some time off. She is in Houston, Texas with her nieces and just enjoying the weekend. I, we do want to welcome you here today. want to thank you for being a part. You, you've given us an hour out of your week. And we in no way, shape, or form want to abuse that. There are so many things going on this week. We don't want you to miss any of them. First and foremost, if you'll notice when you walked in, you didn't see the canopies or tables or anything set up. We are moving, and this will be the first Sunday in a whole lot of Sundays, that we move next door to the chapel center. And that's just for sake of it's cooler it, it gives us a chance to sit and really visit a little more so please do me, do us a favor as you leave today don't run straight to your car but go next door we've got coffee and i don't know maybe some cookies or something i don't know what we have there if there are no cookies that's stan's fault uh, please make note, though, of all the other activities going on this week. Don't forget that every Monday morning we meet at 930 for prayer time. And that's getting ready to change. Now, that's a teaser, okay? It's not going to be removed. We're adding to it a pretty unique manner that will make more and more of you want to come. It's gonna be a time of prayer, fellowship. Still gonna be on Mondays, don't worry about it. But you'll hear more about that in the weeks to come. And so we're excited about that. Also, Wednesday nights, um, we have been having unbelievable groups. Here's your pastor and his lack of faith. I went in, I knew people were spinning out and you know going home for the winter or to their winter homes i should say and so i didn't set enough chairs up this past week that's a good thing amen that's a good thing wednesday nights don't miss your opportunity to come and fellowship and worship with us and then ultimately there are so many other things throughout the week that we want to encourage you to be a part of I'm going to ask that my wonderful bride come. She is going to share mission moments with us, and uh, we're going to go forward from there. Mona, thank you. ministry partners that we count as our um, 
missions partners here in Arizona, but also across the, the world. And so last month we learned about the Shirlsons who serve on the uh, Navajo, serve the Navajo nations up in the top part of Arizona. And uh, I want to remind you to be sure and pray for their daughter Suzanne, who is struggling with cancer right now. And we are doing some uh, personal ministry to her and her mom while her mom's in town caring for her. So remember to pray for Suzanne. Then today I am here to share with you about a ministry that we've known as Ripe for Harvest. Its new name is the Family Connection Foundation. And we actually have royalty in the room because uh, Tim and Denise Dunham are the presidents. And Denise's mom is Mary Ellen Capriello. Wave your hand. There she is. So we really have a personal connection, and I'm excited about uh, even learning more from, from her about that. So I want to tell you a little bit about what they do. The Family Connection Foundation provides home, homes for orphaned children, opportunities for better connection, excuse me, better education, and training for families to be stronger and healthier. And they do that through loving God, loving people, and building his kingdom. Doesn't that sound great? Yeah. yeah. So uh, Tim and Denise are involved in, there's just a whole slew of, of ministries and programs that they are a part of. And I want to encourage you to go on their website and to go on their Facebook so you can stay up to date with what's happening with them. But they uh, serve foster care families, they work in pregnancy services for moms and babies and their families, and they even work with the government in human trafficking. And in 2019, which is their, their last uh, numbers that they've reported, they had 70 convictions uh, through the human trafficking ministry that they do. They served uh, over 100,000 food boxes to families that were in need and provided 500, excuse me, 5,000 dental care uh, services for families that needed those. Um, that's just a, a sampling of some of the amazing things that they're a part of. Uh, I want us to, let's see. I want us to pray for them. They gave me a few prayer requests. Um, first of all, they're still in lockdown there. Uh, while in Chiang Mai, which is where they're located in Thailand, uh, they only have about 50 new cases a day, but the government is very serious about keeping a handle on where things are, are going with the virus. And so if they go outside without a mask, they are fined $600. So that should make us happy that we don't live in Chiang Mai right now. But um, it is still an issue for them over there, and so they're working through that. A couple of, of praise things that they wanted you to know is thank you for praying for Denise's eyes because they are beginning to heal, and she's starting to do much better with that. However, it's not quite there yet, so keep praying for her. And then pray for them to continue to have God's wisdom and direction for the best place for music to attend school. Music is someone that they work with there. And they would love to return to the U.S. to visit their sweet family and other churches and supporters, um, but it's still a little complicated for them to get out of the country. So let's be in prayer for them. Um, I hope you've written that down. I do plan to send you a little update so that you have their um, address, their website, their Facebook address, so that you can write to them and pray for them more thoroughly. Uh, but do pray for them and then continue to give faithfully to the church's general fund because it's through that fund that we're able to partner financially with these organizations, these ministries that um, our church has chosen to support. And so when we give generously to the church, 
we can continue giving generously to our ministry partners across the world. I just want to end with this verse, James 1.27. This is pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father to visit orphans and widows in their distress and keep oneself unstained by the world. So let's keep that in mind as we minister here in Sun Lakes, around the valley in Arizona, and all the way over to Thailand. All right, thank you. Thank you, Stan. We, we have a lot to pray about today as a church and as a nation. Um, first, I want to let you know that I appreciate all the hidden people in the back that we don't talk about much and we don't see for Bob and Derek and Judy and so many others. I want you to know that Bob Miller, a dear loved one, um, had some some issues go on this past week. He ended up in the Maricopa County Burn Center. As of yesterday, he now let me. I'm just going to share with you in brief. Okay, he had fallen and broken an ankle, and then after that, he had spilled what sounds like a whole pot of coffee. We don't know necessarily. 
uh, but burn himself incredibly bad. As of yesterday, though, no one can reach him. He, we know he's still at the hospital. We know that he's there, but we're really having trouble reaching him. So I'm going to ask that, you know, we, we pray for each other when we're sick. Amen? And we, we lift up each other when we're uh, in need. And Bob, right now, I, I can pretty much say any person in this room, you've been prayed for by Bob. And now Bob needs our prayers. And so I'm going to ask you to pray for Bob. Pray that God would use the doctors and use all that they have within their power to heal our brother. Amen? Amen. And I know there are others. It is such a joy. It, you know, God blesses us to see folks that have been ill and not well. And we're graced today with a few. Uh, Jerry, it's always good to see you. And we love you and we appreciate you, okay? And so thank you for making the effort to be here today. That was a golf clap, by the way, Jerry. You and I have been in some scenarios where you give golf claps, and that was a golf clap. Woody, thank you for being here. Just so many others that are here. And then pray for our nation. I read an article today. In fact, one of my friends that... He and I try to keep each other accountable to stuff. Read a, a pretty in-depth article this morning early out of the New York Times about what's going on with Hamas in Israel. Church, I, uh, you normally do not hear me say this. This is not normally things that I raise up on the big bar. But will you please pray for what's going on in the Middle East? Please pray for peace, and uh, I would encourage all of you, go online and look up the article that was written literally this morning in the New York Times. I, I'm forgetting the author's name, and I'll think of it in a moment, but he explains probably in one of the most understandable ways what happened 23 days ago as a mosque was attacked and we no one knew it no one it was not part of the news but since then it has really brought up uh, some anger and some uh, violence and while we may feel like we are immune from that in Sun Lakes Arizona we're not realize that the Bible and prophecy is being fulfilled as we live. Amen? Amen? Those that know Christ, that's a great thing. Don't be scared of that. That is so wonderful. If you're here today and you don't know Christ, man, I've got great news. I'll be around after church and I can tell you about him and introduce you to him and then you can get into a relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. I'm going to ask you to think for just a moment. What is it that weighs heavily on your heart? Give it to God. The failures, perhaps, of this past week, surrender them to God. The anxieties for what lie ahead of us, whether you're here present or watching online, Surrender them to God. Father, we gather today. Said now, please don't be mad. <laughs> but somebody beat you to the bill. And and now think about that for a second. That doesn't happen often enough, does it? Uh, and I guarantee you, just because I take you to dinner or lunch doesn't mean you're going to get beat to the bill. All right? Linda, ain't going to happen. You always buy. But, but the look on their face, it was like one of dismay and unacceptance. In fact, the gentleman said, no, this is not happening. Well, it already happened. 
No, it, this is not what I had planned. It's already happened. Now I'm having fun at this point, all right? I'm like, you don't ever get a, a leg up on this person, and I've got a leg up, and I'm enjoying every second of it. And I look at the waiter, and I said, ah, oh, they couldn't afford it anyway. Don't worry about it. I've got them covered. If you're here today, now listen to this. If you're here today and you know personally that you've come to that point in your life that you've given all your, all the things you've done right, you've given them to God. To you be glory, honor, and praise. And all the things you've done wrong, God all own. But you've done that. You've come and you've said, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. I need to let you know, and here's where we're covering today. The bill's been paid. It's been paid. As we trek through and we look at the Apostles' Creed, there might not be any more solid or, or encouraging statement than this. We believe in salvation. I don't believe in salvation because I'm a minister, because Lord knows y'all have watched ministers come and go. And, and, and by the way, just so you know, hell will have a couple of ministers in it. But there, there's one minister I know hell won't have in it, and that's me. Oh, because you're so perfect? Absolutely not. Follow me for just four hours. I'll, I'll mess up perfect. <laughs> but you want to know why I know that 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 when I close my eyes in death, I will be met by Jesus. It's because Jesus fulfilled what he said he would fulfill in Romans chapter 8. What Jesus fulfilled in chapter Romans chapter 3. What Jesus fulfilled in chapter 5. In the fifth chapter, down towards the eighth verse, it says this. But God demonstrated his love towards us and that while we might be sinners now I'm in a room with senior adults and I know y'all don't sin <laughs> but for those younger in the room I'm gloating right now in case you didn't catch that we sin but Romans, as, as Paul wrote the church in Rome, and he was trying to help us understand the magnitude and, and the sheer depth of God's love. In the fifth chapter, in the eighth verse, he said, but listen to this. God demonstrated his love towards you, Mitch. Now we're going to do something fun. When I say his love towards you, you're going to audibly say your name. It's not complicated, y'all. I'm going to say, and God demonstrates his love towards you, and then I'm going to hear an, an inaudible response. And you know what that means? Everybody's going to say their own name. I can't make anything out of it, and that's what's supposed to happen. But God demonstrated his love towards you that Jesus Christ died for you. He died for you. When I surrendered to go into ministry, I went through all the motions as a young preacher boy. And I will never forget the Sunday night that I was sitting next to my bride-to-be and the pastor was preaching on commitment. Beyond that, I couldn't tell you what he was preaching on. Beyond that. 
And I was a part of a church that did something rather unique and cool and important. They extended altar calls. I'm going to leave that one alone. It was a time in which God's word was spoken and you could respond to God's word. You could come and pray with someone. You could come and set an appointment up to visit with someone later. But it was that night sitting with my future bride that it dawned on me that while I contended, talked about being a preacher boy, I had never once told another individual in the world that Jesus Christ loved them and had a plan for their life. And I was convicted in my innermost being. And I went forward that night and I just knelt at the altar and I began to pray, God, if, if I am really called to be a minister, then surely you're calling me to tell people about the truth. That outside a relationship with Jesus Christ, they will not know salvation. And the very next day, early, uh, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, my phone rang at my house and my mother answered. And it was Dr. Don Reed. And he said, Barbara, hey, has Mitch left the house yet? And she said, no, I'll go find him, which wasn't hard because I was in my room asleep. She walked in and she said, pastor wants to talk to you. And I get up and, you know, kind of act like I'm awake. Pastor. He said, Mitch, I'm going to come by about 2 o'clock this afternoon and pick you up. I want you to make some visits with me. Okay. What do I wear? Just please, shirt and pants would be nice for you. Just shirt and pants. And that day... I will never forget, and I'm, I'm going to be overly specific because it's important. His gray Ford pulled up in front of my house. And I got out and I went and sat in the pastor's seat. And I said, you know, Brother Don, what are we doing? He said, we're just going to go make some visits. And he had a stack of cards in his hand. And we drove three blocks away from my house to a, uh, uh, an apartment. And he knocked on the door and that mother opened the door. And I watched Dr. Reed as he walked in. And instead of sitting in the recliner that he was offered or the couch where there was room, he sat on the floor. Catch this now. He just sat down on the floor where he was eye level with those... <coughs> four young men and that mother. And he opened his Bible and he said, you know, I appreciate you guys visiting with us on Sunday. And I want to come today and I want to tell you about God's love for your life. And he went through Rome, through the book of Romans. Beautiful, beautiful exposition of, of uh, you know, for all of sin didn't come short of the glory of God. But God gives us eternal life. And, and then he got to Romans 8, or, or Romans 5, chapter 8. He said, but you know what the great part is, y'all, is that God demonstrated his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Jesus Christ died. And here I am, this preacher boy. I'm not sitting on the floor. I'm sitting in the recliner. And he looks up at those children and that mother. And he said, can I ask you a personal question? As you look back over your life, have you ever once confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Have you ever asked him to forgive you of your sins? And all of them said no. And he said, wouldn't today be a good time? And I sat there in humble amazement and watch four people ask Jesus Christ to forgive them of their sins and cleanse them of all guilt and offer them eternal life. Now, for some of you, you feel like that type of conversion evangelism is a little 
bit of a stretch. I gotta tell you, for me, it's not. I'm no longer gonna apologize for proclaiming the truth that, that salvation comes when we confess our sins and we invite Jesus into our, our heart as Lord and Savior. Not gonna do it. And I learned at that moment that it's the job of the believer that we are to proclaim with everything else within the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, Almighty Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, our Lord. But you get down a little bit further in there, it says, I also believe in salvation. Where does salvation come from? From a relationship with Jesus Christ. So if we were to take that verse, but God, let's, let's, ask, let's talk about the who. God. You can't earn salvation. You can't work it up on your own. You will never be good enough. You can never read enough. You can never pray enough. You can never give enough to get salvation. You get it through a relationship with Jesus Christ. So God, but God demonstrates. Now, you know what I love about that? I, I've got to tell you, I've... All week long, I've been playing with word studies, and the more I play, the, my biggest fear, Linda, is this to turn into a two-hour and 85-minute message. <laughs> Just saying. The, the Greek word demonstrates, it, I, would, I would be cheating you out of your money's worth this morning if I did not tell you that the word demonstrate is the Greek word, and I'm going to pronounce it wrong, but for those Greek scholars in here, you'll just give me a break. Sinastama. Sinastama, and it might be something like totally different than that, all right? But it's a word that means to place together, to stand with, to show. But God stood with Mitch. But God showed Mitch. And that while you were at your worst, I gave my best. <laughs> I got to say it again. And I want you just, if you would quietly and humbly in your mind, think about this. That when we were at our worst, and let's face it, each and every one of us in this room, we've been at our worst before, haven't we? But when I was at my worst, Jesus Christ said, I saw you. And not only did I see you, but I wanted to demonstrate the depth of my love for you. And that while you yet, by the way, that's present tense. It's not past tense. He didn't see us beforehand. He's not necessarily looking at the worst in the future. He said, I see you for who you are and who you're always going to be. I see you. How many of us walk through life and we literally feel like we are invisible? No one recognizes us. No one sees us. And if you wanted to know if there was an epidemic among senior adults, especially in the Sun Lakes area, you've lost your job, your identity there. You may have lost your spouse, your, your co 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 cohesiveness there. And you feel like you're going through life and you just don't have any identity. There's been a man here in Sun Lakes that I've been ministering to and sharing with at least once a week for the last two years. Never been to our church. He said about six months ago, we were talking, and he said, you know, I think I'm pretty much just invisible. I said, well, I see you. Well, but yeah, you, you're the pastor. You have to walk across the room and say hi to me. No, they don't pay me for that. Now, if you want to give an offering right now, I'll take it, but... Uh, I'm coming across the room and I'm visiting with you because you're important. He said, I'm not important. I'm, in, I'm invisible. 
And you know what's sad? In this very room today, some feel invisible. You feel like you're not noticed. You feel like you're a part of a group, but yet you don't stand out. And I want you to know that according to God's word, he, he saw you and I for who we are in the past, now, and in the future. And he said, because I recognize you and because I see who you are, I want to demonstrate something to you. I want to die on the cross for your sins. But God demonstrated his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Jesus Christ died. Today at Circle K, I'm getting out of my car and I'm watching them put the handcuffs on a person, putting them in the back of the trailblazer or whatever it is they were driving and they shut the door and and y those of you that know me know I'm not this spiritual okay you know I'm not but knowing what I was going to preach on today and knowing the the, the and, and as one unfortunately I hate to admit that I've had handcuffs on before uh, it, but it wasn't my fault it was somebody else's fault I just had handcuffs on uh, I I looked at that and I thought, if I had a way to walk up and say, hey, let's take the handcuffs off them, just put them on me, I'll do it. <laughs> no, that wasn't going to happen. I had, a, I had an appointment today with you. But you know, even if I didn't have an appointment, you dig down and mine down deep into my heart and that compassion wasn't there. That drive wasn't there. That love wasn't there. And I go inside and I grab my Red Bull and I'm looking out the window and I'm watching them shut that door and I'm watching that police officer get in the car and drive off and I'm thinking, that could have been me for eternity if it wasn't for Jesus. Because when I had the handcuffs on when I had those chains that bound me, Jesus shows up, and because of his amazing grace, the chains dropped, and I had been set free. As we sang just a moment ago, my Savior's love is what ransomed me. Not because of who I was. Not because of what I had done but because of a Savior's love. You know, we could probably in there, we could probably say, thanks for coming to see you. But I believe there's yet one more component to today. And Linda... has worked hard to help me get my arms and my mind and my head around it. As a result of salvation, I have to, as I go through life, really testify, oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Day I will never forget. What day was that for you? What day was it for you? That wonderful day. That day you'll never forget. When after wandering in darkness, Jesus, my Savior, I met. You see, church is not just something we do on Sundays because it's Sunday. We gather on Sunday to be reminded of the fact that we have salvation because there was a wonderful day that we met Jesus. For me, there are two wonderful days, Linda. A little boy at eight years old when I gave my heart to Christ.
And then that day, that Sunday night, when God broke through the callousness of my heart and said, Mitch, I've got so much more for you than then to just call yourself a preacher boy. I want you to be my boy. I want you to be my child. Mitch, I want to turn today into a wonderful day. I want to tell you something. I've had a lot of Mondays in my life. Never had a Monday like I did that day in an apartment complex on California Avenue in Chandler, Arizona when I watched a few young men and their mom give their hearts to Jesus Christ. What a wonderful day. We're going to close our service and we're going to sing about wonderful days. Then we're going to be dismissed and we're going to go over and we're going to have maybe a cup of coffee or tea or a cookie or I don't know what we're going to have. But my prayer is that we don't lose the wonder of today in the busyness of today. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you've heard me passionately tell you about the importance of that. I want to be over there and so many others, and we'd love to talk to you about that if that's a question. Or maybe it's you're at that point like I was as a college student that I've got to take the next step. I don't know what the next step is, but man, do I want to take it. Let's talk about it. There's a wonderful day ahead of us. I believe it's today. Thank you.